340Paddler here, and today I want to talk about blisters. We all get them, we all love them, maybe not love them, but we get very used to them paddling. And I would venture to guess that no one has ever finished a 340 without any blisters. So let's get right into it. There's two ways of dealing with blisters on the 340. You can either go barehanded, or you can get gloves. Gloves can be dangerous. You tend to put them on and you think, oh, this is great. You cannot take them off. The best example of this is last year, Doug Robinet finished in sub 50. And when he did, I'm pretty sure it was Doug, he peeled his gloves off in front of me and the hand, the palm of his hands were just white and soft and probably dead. It was not a great thing to see. I personally always paddle without gloves, but seeing that makes me understand what happens with the gloves. Uh, many people on the forums will tell you once you put gloves on, you can't take them off. And that's true because your hand needs time to dry out once you do take them off. If it doesn't dry out, that soft skin will shred incredibly quickly. The other problem with gloves is usually there's a seam that runs through the thumb right along this joint, and that's going to be a big problem because you're going to push that into your flesh over 200,000 times every time you take a paddle stroke down this ridiculously long race. So, the other option is paddle barehanded. And it sounds crazy, but bear with me. What you want to do is do all of your training runs. If you have an ergometer, do that barehanded. Do everything barehanded. Uh, and you're going to toughen up the skin. Uh, just paddling on the ergometer gives me, hopefully you can see that, uh, some pretty good calluses on my hands. And then the early season races will... Uh, tear up my hands and callous them more so that by the time I get to the 340 my hands will hold out for a while. Notice I said for a while. Everyone will blister. Even the best prepared will blister. So what do you do when the inevitable happens? Probably around Catfish Katie's, Jeff City, somewhere in there. Well, there's a couple of things that I recommend. First, these are Band-Aid brand blister band-aids, and these work beautifully. My first year I tried moleskin and tape, and it just didn't work. It wouldn't stick. Every time you take a stroke, it moves. Eventually, it actually causes more blisters than it helps. But these things uh, work beautifully. You put them on the blister, and you do not, under any circumstances, take it off. If you do, it will tear the blister open, and that's the last thing you want to do. These, however, depending on where it needs to be on your hands, will not always stick well, which is where this comes in. This is hockey tape. I used to play, believe it or not, looking at my build, but I used to play ice hockey on a regular basis. And the difference between hockey tape and athletic tape is about $4 a roll. Hockey tape is really great sticky stuff. It'll tape the blister band-aids on there. It'll hold really well. You always want to tape way more than you think you're going to need. And basically at every checkpoint after I really start getting blisters, I'll check and if there's anything major, I'll put a blister band-aid on it, I'll tape it, and continue on. And again, you do not take any of this off until you get to the end. Preferably until you get to St. Charles, get doped up on some kind of painkiller, and then scream bloody murder as you peel these things off your skin because it will not be a pleasant experience. But it's worth it to be legend and finish this. So this is 340 Paddler. If you have a topic of interest, please let me know. Any questions, comments, concerns, quarrels, qualms, quandaries, or curse words can be left in the comments, and I will do my best to respond. Till next time, keep your paddle in the water.